Let's go back to a problem that we've seen before. It's called substitution. It says if f of x is equal to 2x plus 3, find f of x minus 4. What that says is take that and plug it into the x in the equation labeled f. Well, when you do that, this is what it looks like. And then if your gut's telling you, oh, I should distribute, yeah, you probably should. And then you should combine like terms. This is actually known as a composition of functions, where you take one function and plug it into another. In other words, the output of one function becomes the input of another function. The way a composition of functions works is that you start with the domain of f. Domain, remember I said, is the input, so it's x. So you take x, you plug it into your equation, and out comes y. But instead of y, we're using this other representation called f of x. Well, the output, f of x, becomes the input of a second function. So you plug whatever number you have into this other function. And the number that comes out, we call that g of f of x. And that's how a composition of functions works. Now the way we write a composition of functions, uh, there are two different ways of writing it. Sometimes they write it like this. It's pronounced f of g of x. It says take the output of g of x and plug it into f. But sometimes we use this notation. I don't like it so much. I call it the fog notation because sometimes I feel like it puts students in a fog. All I want you to know is that these are the same notation and they are pronounced the same. The order in which we compose functions is very important because if I change the order, and now this says g of f of x. That says I start with f of x, and whatever output I get, I plug into g. Or we sometimes write the notation like this. And it's pronounced the same way, even though it kind of looks like you wrote the word goth. Let's actually do an algebraic problem that models the composition of functions. So let f of x equal x minus 5 and g of x equals x squared. What is g of f of negative 3? Remember I just said a moment ago I could also write the problem like this. So the way this works is you start in the parentheses. Think about this like order of operations. You'd always work your way from the inside of the parentheses out. That says find f of negative 3. Well, how do you find f of negative 3? you plug negative 3 into the equation labeled f. So you get negative 3 minus 5, which is negative 8. Well, now you're left with g of negative 8. So that says plug that into the g equation. So you get negative 8 squared, which is 64. It's pretty simple, but we need to probably do it another couple of times. Now let's do a problem where we're not going to plug a number in, just an expression. And we're going to do both f of g of x and g of f of x because what I want to show you is that because this is not really multiplication, when you switch the order, you are not going to get the same answer. So let's start with f of g of x. That's saying this. It says take the output g of x, which is x squared plus 1, and plug it into f. So f is 3x minus 2. So I'm going to take out the x and replace it with x squared plus 1. Then I'm going to distribute and simplify. And I find out that f of g of x is 3x squared plus 1. All right, now I'm going to do this again, but I'm going to do it the other direction. So I'm going to do g of f of x. What I do is I always start inside the parentheses, and f of x is 3x minus 2. Now that says, will you plug 3x minus 2 into g? 
So into x squared plus 1, I'm going to replace x with 3x minus 2. All right, don't forget, every time you see an expression squared, you're going to do this. And then you're going to FOIL, so you get 9x squared minus 6x minus 6x plus 4, and don't forget about your plus 1 that's outside. These do not cancel, they're not opposites. 9x squared minus 12x plus 5 is the final answer. So notice that when I changed the direction in which I did my composition, I did not get the same answer. Let's do a practical application of a composition of functions. You have a coupon good for $5 off the price of any large pizza. You also get a 10% discount on any pizza if you show your student ID. How much more would you pay for a large pizza if the cashier applies the discount or the coupon first? Now, you may not think this makes a difference, but the order in which the person applies the discounts is going to change the price of the pizza. So let's start with this. I don't know how much the pizza costs, so let's call X the cost of the pizza. Now let's find out what a function that represents the coupon would be. Let's call that C of X. We'll use C for coupon. Using the coupon, it's $5 off the price of the pizza, so that's X minus 5. That's pretty easy. Now let's write another function that represents what you would, ha what you would pay if you got the 10% discount and not the, pr not the coupon. So we'll call D for discount. Now the way the discount works is if you have a 10, let's say the, the price of the pizza is $10 and you get a 10% discount. You would start by multiplying that by 0.10, um, and you end up getting a dollar, but that's not the price of the pizza because then you have to do 10 minus the dollar. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the price of the pizza minus how much the discount was, which was 10% times the cost of the pizza. Okay, so now we're going to do a composition of functions, and we're going to have to do both directions. One is going to be C of D, and the other one is going to be D of C. So let's start with this one, the uh, coupon. If I plug in the discount first, the discount is x minus 0.10x. I'm going to plug that into C. C is x minus 5, so it's x minus 0.10x. Well, x minus 0.10x, I probably should have done this up here, is uh, 0.9x, because they're like terms, I should have simplified them. So that's the price of the pizza if you apply the discount first, then the coupon. Discount, then coupon. Now let's do the other direction. Now let's apply the coupon first. So the coupon was x minus 5, and now I'm going to plug that into my 0.9 times x. So I get 0.9x minus whatever 5 times 0.9 is, it's 4.5. This is if you do the discount, then coupon. To find out the difference in payment between them, we're going to subtract the quantities. So let me take the first function we got, the first one was 0.9x minus 5, and we'll subtract from it the second function, which was 0.9x minus 4.5. Well, remember I said make this a plus and make those opposites. These are like terms, but they're opposites, and they cancel. And then I have negative 5 plus 4.5, which is negative 0.50. But I don't care that I got a negative, because in other words, there's a 50 cent difference between the two methods of applying your discount and coupon. 
Well, basically, if you do the, coup the discount and then the coupon, you're going to pay more money. So you'd rather have them apply the coupon first, take the $5 off the price of the pizza, then apply the discount, and you will save more money.